in state is we will be measuring the specific heat capacity of this aluminium block. The first thing to do is to first work out the mass of the block. So I'm going to use a digital balance here and we're going to measure the mass of the block. That's 1,007 grams, so that's one kilogram within experimental error. So we're going to count that as one kilogram. Now, I'm going to heat this up using uh, this heater here, which I'm going to insert into the central hole here. And I want to make sure that most of the energy that goes into this heater here actually goes into the aluminium block and is not dissipated in the surrounding. So I've got some insulation over there. I'm just going to wrap some insulation around here as well. Now I've got insulation around this block, it will mean it reduces the heat energy to the surrounding. I want to measure the temperature, so I'm going to put the thermometer in this hole here. The key thing is, I want to plot a graph of how the temperature of this aluminium block changes as we put more heat energy in joules into this aluminium block. And I'm going to use a power pack to um, provide electrical energy for the heater, which will convert it into heat. And the easiest way to work out the amount of energy is to use what's called a joule meter. So I'm going to set this up and show you how to do this. So, what we need to do is, first of all, on this side we have our source, which is going to be the power supply. And that's going to be set to 12 volts. We're then going to have the load, which is the heater, connected onto the other side. And that will measure the heat energy in joules delivered to the heater. So we're going to pop that in there. I'm now going to reset this so that it is measuring energy and we need to measure the temperature every minute and the energy every minute for 10 minutes. But the beauty is we should be using a stopwatch, but this meter not only has the energy, it has the seconds as well. So I'm going to set this up with a camera so you can see and we'll increase the video speed so you can then take measurements every minute and then plot the graph. So before we turn the power supply on, we need to measure the initial temperature, which is 23.5 degrees. We're going to plot a graph of energy on the y-axis against temperature on the x-axis. So we're now going to turn the power supply on for the heater and then the energy meter. Notice with this energy meter we don't need a stopwatch because it also records the time. We're now going to measure the energy and the temperature every minute. Very soon the energy will go up to kilojoules so that is what we're plotting. I'm now going to speed the video up and then every minute pause the video so you can record the energy and the temperature rise and you can see the graph being plotted as we go along. So next thing we do is to plot a best fit line, which in this case is straight, making sure we've got the same number of points scattered one side as the other. 
So the next thing we want to do is to measure the gradient of the graph. So we're going to look at how the energy changes for a certain change in temperature. So I've just chosen 44 degrees. And at 44 degrees, the energy was 19.6 kilojoules. So I'm now going to choose another temperature, which I'm going to use 44 degrees. And at this temperature, the energy was exactly 2 kilojoules. So we've got a change in temperature of 20 degrees. So in this 20 degree change, the energy goes from 2 kilojoules up to 29.6 kilojoules. So this means a change in energy of 17.6 kilojoules. So we now have to know how to use the gradient of the graph to measure the specific heat capacity of the aluminium block. The equation for specific heat capacity is energy supplied divided by the mass times the temperature rise. Weighing the aluminium block earlier, we found the mass was one kilogram. So we can now work out the specific heat capacity, remembering that the energy was in kilojoules, so we've got to convert that back into joules. So specific heat capacity is the energy supplied, which was 17,600 joules, divided by the mass, which was one kilogram, times by the temperature rise, which was 20 degrees. So that gives us a specific heat capacity of 880 joules per kilogram degree C for aluminium.